Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and Niger. Their presidents on an extraordinary mission in Bamako, aimed at ending Mali's political crisis. We are here to meet President Keita and the various parties concerned to bring peace and ensure that Mali returns on the path of stability for the sake of the whole region. Outside their meeting, demonstrators supporting Malian opposition leader Sumaila Sisse. He remains missing after being abducted during the parliamentary elections in April. It is time for these African heads of state to intervene in the actions of Ibeka and his government to bring Sumaila Sisse back to his family safe and sound as soon as possible. In his absence, an unprecedented protest movement calling itself the M5. Among its leader, Imam Mahmoud Diko, but also leaders of the opposition and civil society, all calling for President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita to resign. Police fired bullets in July as demonstrators attempted to set fire to the National Assembly, build roadblocks and seize control of the national TV station. The West African regional organization ECOWAS made a series of recommendations on Sunday to end the crisis, including setting up a new constitutional court to rule over 31 contested parliamentary seats and creating a national unity government. But the M5 rejected the recommendations and demands the resignation of President Keita. They are blaming the crisis in Mali to the issue of the second round of the legislative elections. I think this is a fundamental mistake. The main issue is that Ibrahim Boubacar Kaida, when he came to power in 2013, had specific pledges, which is ending the war in the north. Millions of Malians fled years of fighting between Mali's army and armed groups linked to Al-Qaeda and ISIL in the north and center of the country. Attacks in Mali and neighboring countries continue despite 14,000 French and UN troops based in the Sahel. Seven years after becoming president, Keita's critics say he's failed to deliver peace and is unable to unite Malians seeking a better future. And Nicolas Sack joins me now from Dakar in neighbouring Senegal. Uh, Nick, these five regional leaders who came to Bamako only really had one day to try and solve the problem. They've been talking all day. There was supposed to be a final communique. What are you hearing? Well, as you said, one day to resolve this crisis is just too short. Um, there were four hours behind schedule. Right now, we're hearing that police are dispersing uh, journalists and, and crowds that have gathered outside the hotel, where inside, four of the heads of states are meeting with uh, the opposition, the M5 movement, including Mahmoud Diko. Uh, President Ouattara left a little bit earlier today um, to attend to some, some matters in, in his country, Ivory Coast. Um, so, no final communique to take place tonight. In the meantime, we have heard from uh, a statement coming out of Paris because uh, a French soldier was killed to today, uh, part of the commando unit in the region of Gossi by the borders with Burkina Faso inside Mali. Remember, there's 4,000 French soldiers here in what is the former, colon uh, a former colony of France. They're closely monitoring the situation here. They don't want to step in or pronounce themselves, but they're backing the ECOWAS mediation effort. We're hearing that there may be uh, later this week an extraordinary summit of the West African body and of the heads of state to address the issue in Mali. So the negotiations continue. So, uh, Nicholas, just for our international audience, uh, can you just explain to us why Mali is so strategically important in terms of security for regional neighbours, which is why those very presidents are in the capital right now trying to find a way forward that would secure their own uh, security for their countries? That's right, and we're talking about Ivory Coast, Ghana, uh, Nigeria, Senegal, and Niger. Niger has been uh, has been a site of many attacks from armed groups. We're talking about armed groups as Jamaat Nusratul Islam, Al Muslimin, and Al Qaeda affiliate, and the Islamic State in the Greater Sahara, which has really expanded expanded its area of attacks, even attacking uh, uh, northern uh, Ivory Coast. So uh, the stability of Mali is the stability of the region. They want to see these heads of states want to see security in that region, not only the regional powers here. It's the argument put forward by 
President Macron and, uh, and the European Union that the securing the borders of Europe starts by securing stability of Mali. Remember, the north of Mali is used for um, the, the, the movement of, of migrants who then cross to the Mediterranean. It's also uh, used for illegal traffic, such as drugs. Um, this month, we've seen a new force, the Takuba force, that involves uh, European special forces that will be patrolling this area of northern Mali. So it's a of a strategic importance, not just for Mali, but for the region as a whole and for Europe, to find a solution to this political deadlock in Mali. So, so much is at stake, so. Indeed. For the moment, Nicholas Hack in Dakar, Senegal. Thank you for the update. Let's stay on message and uh, join Marie Rogier Biloa, is the president and CEO of Africa International Media Group, joins me now live from Paris. Good to have you with us live on the programme. No rerun of an election, no coalition government, regional leaders hard pressed to find a solution, but is there one? Oh, that is uh, very difficult. Uh, I think, first of all, the Malians themselves, the whole, those who were protesting in the streets, they don't believe at all in a, a mediation by ECOWAS uh, because they believe that the first thing ECOWAS will be eager to do is to maintain one of uh, a president like like themselves, the, the leaders of ECOWAS. So, uh, and that's something they don't want at all. I mean. Uh, uh, of course, removing one person will not solve all the problem of Mali because we we just heard about the security issue. Mali has has a, 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 is bordering seven countries and has like over seven thousand kilometer uh, borders with all this with the Sahel uh, countries, and uh, there is a security issue. But there is also something which is huge in this mm. uh, in the current turmoil is corruption. I mean. The, the, the Malian so civil society, you see pe people protesting um, under the rule of Iman, uh, the Iman Diko, the Malis are of majority uh, uh, Muslim, Muslim countries, but not only Muslims okay. are in the streets. No. Uh, uh, you have some if, Christians if just... too, you have trade unions, so it's about... Let me, just, let, no, let me just jump in there, because I think that's, that's what we're, our next question will be, really, is that the uh, regional leaders that have come to uh, Mali and to Bamako to speak to M5 coalition, the opposition uh, that many of the people are, are supporting are on the streets, are a disparate group, aren't they? As you just suggested, some of them are religious leaders, some of them are civil society, some of them are union leaders. They all have different needs and different wants for Mali. It's difficult yeah. for those regional presidents yeah. to try and negotiate with a, a disparate opposition that really have different political positions, isn't it? OK, for sure. And what, what they have put forward was to maintain uh, President Ibeka in place. They say you cannot remove a, uh, an elected president uh, during his term. You have to wait. And the uh, Constitution is important. But the point is, the the the... the Constitutional Court has been uh, dissolved by President Ibeka himself because it was contested. There were one of the claims of uh, the protesters uh, because the, that court has nullified uh, a, a parliamentary mm. seats uh, in a fraudulent way, they, they believe, and uh, concerning 31 contenders, uh, and that one of the claims that they need to have a new election. They don't want that court. They, they have to dismiss them. What the president had tried to do, but it, yeah. it's not uh, happening because they are resisting. The court is resisting. And uh, uh, on also, they want a new government. They want President uh, Keita to leave. And I think that point, they won't succeed in having it right now. So they say, if we don't get him out of the, the job... We, he has to, his uh, power must be restricted okay. and he has to share power with opposition uh, well, until the end of the term. OK, well, we shall see what happens. Uh, Marie-Roger Belloa joining us from Paris. Thanks so much for your time.